Everyone, God bless you, and thanks a lot for tuning in. I have prepared a reflection for you today that I have entitled, God's Kindness and Severity. But uh, first, I want to show you my beautiful St. Bridget's Cross here that I keep on my desk. I was thinking of St. Bridget recently because we just received a young woman into the church, Bridget, and what an incredible woman. I keep also on my desk here a beautiful miniature of the great Irish saints Columba, his monastery, uh, Iona Abbey. This is uh, on the beautiful monastic island of Iona in the Hebrides island chain, the western part of Scotland. Anyway, great Scottish saints. Also, before I share with you these thoughts on God's kindness and severity, I also want to call to your attention that uh, tomorrow, on the 1st of November, we are launching a new YouTube channel, Patristic Nectar Publications Kids, PNP Kids. I'm very hopeful, uh, I'm thankful for those who are working on this channel to provide something of edification for the young ones, <clears throat> for the wee ones. So keep your eyes out for PNP Kids. God's kindness and severity. You may recognize that language, I hope so. It comes from St. Paul's epistle to the Romans, the end of chapter 11. In chapters 9 through 11, St. Paul has uh, taken a, a, a new road in his epistle to the Romans. He's been developing... Um, how our Savior saves us, and how salvation is applied to believers. And he, as he's discussing this question of salvation, addresses the question about the fact that so many Jews did not receive Christ as the telos of the law, as the goal and destiny of uh, the whole Mosaic dispensation. The whole movement of the Old Covenant, of course, pointed to Jesus. Jesus told the Pharisees, you search the scriptures because you think in them you have eternal life and it is these that bear witness of me. So many Jews at the time of Christ were so content with their own self-righteousness. Uh, they did not see or accept Jesus as their Messiah. Some did, uh, but many did not. And Paul addresses this. What is their status and What's happened? He describes them as natural branches of God's one uh, covenant uh, olive tree that have been broken off, and the Gentiles, wild branches, have been grafted in. And after describing this pattern of how the unbelieving Jews were rejected uh, by God, even though they're the natural branches, they have been broken off, and the foreign wild branches, the Gentiles, by their faith, have been grafted into the tree, and how it's possible that those who have been grafted in can, if they lose faith, be, bro be broken off. And those who, are nat who should have naturally believed, uh, the Jews, can be grafted in even easy more easily. Beholding this, he says, notice, fix your eyes upon the kindness and the severity of God. Kindness for receiving those who, by faith, into the, his tree and severity by breaking off those in their stubborn disbelief. I'd like to read you a little uh, word from St. John Chrysostom in his commentary on this portion of the Epistle to the Romans that describe a little bit more of what, what's going on here. Let me read to you from St. John's homily 19 on the Epistle to the Romans. He says, Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God on them which fell, severity, but towards thee, goodness, if you continue in his goodness, otherwise you also shall be cut off. And he does not say, behold thy well-doing, behold thy labors, but behold the goodness of God toward man, to show that the whole comes of grace from above and to make us tremble. For this reason, for boasting should make thee to fear. Since the Lord hath been good unto thee, do thou therefore fear. For the blessings do not abide by the unmovable, if thou turnest listless as neither do the evils with them if they alter. So here he's saying, look, don't be overconfident as a person who has been incorporated into the church by faith. Fear God and be careful to 
guard your faith at all times. And he also continues, and they also, if they do not abide in unbelief, will be grafted in. For it was not God that cut them off, but they have broken themselves off and fallen. And they did, and he did well to have it said, they have broken themselves off. Here he's interpreting Paul saying, using the passive voice, they've broken themselves off by unbelief. For he has never yet so cast them off, though they have sinned so much and so often. You see what a great thing a man's free choice is, how great the efficacy of his mind is. For none of these things is immutable. It's not once saved, always saved. If you believed yesterday, that's good for yesterday. But what about today? You see what a great thing a man's free choice is. For none of these things is immutable, neither thy good nor his evil. You see too how he raises up even him in his despondency and humbles the other in his confidence. And do, and do not thou be faint at hearing of severity, nor thou be confident at hearing of goodness. The reason why he cut thee off in severity was that thou mightest long to come back. And the reason why he showed goodness to thee was that thou mightest continue in it by doing good. It's a beautiful word from St. John Chrysostom about the importance of a living faith, of maintaining the faith until the end, about persevering unto the end, as our Lord Jesus himself taught us, right? The one who perseveres to the end will be saved. This concept of the duality of uh, God's character, his kindness and his severity to those who have been stubborn in their unbelief. This is something that Paul develops and is found in the prophets of the Old Testament. In fact, there's a beautiful image of this in the great evangelical prophet Isaiah. He uses a concept, it's in fact picked up by St. Matthew the evangelist and placed in and used in his gospel. He uses the, con the concept to describe the immense kindness the immeasurable gentleness of our Savior. He uses the, this image of a wick. So Isaiah has two wicks in his prophecy. Let's discuss the wick of kindness. Isaiah says in chapter 42 uh, and following some very, very beautiful words about God's long-suffering kindness. Let me read those to you here. I think I have them here. This is Isaiah chapter 42 where he describes first the wick of God's kindness. Listen to this beautiful word. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the nations, and he will not cry out or lift his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. What a beautiful text. How gentle is the servant of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, that Isaiah prophesies. So gentle that if there's a branch that's broken, he won't tear it off. He'll repair it. That makes me think of uh, the recent elder Amphilochios from Rhodes, the island of Rhodes, who went around repairing broken branches uh, in his monastery and on his island, t tying them up so that the trees can heal as a picture of how God cares for uh, those who are weak. Christ is so sensitive that he won't break off a wounded branch. And if a person is struggling to believe and their, their wick is lit, but it's barely there, it's smoking and you can just see a little tiny orange dot or maybe a little flame and you see the smoke coming out. He won't go Psst, and put it out. Instead, he'll put his hands around it and blow by his spirit upon that small little faith to help it grow, to help it come to life. This is how gentle he is. St. Matthew takes this text from Isaiah 42 and describes Christ with it in the 12th chapter of his gospel. It's a marvelous text. The very next chapter in Isaiah's prophecy, Isaiah uses the same image of the wick, except this time not to demonstrate God's kindness, but to demonstrate God's severity. Let me read that text to you so that you can hear 
And I find it amazing that Isaiah in these back-to-back chapters, this is, this is the only place in the entire Old Testament and the only place in Isaiah's gospel in which uh, this concept of the wick is used. And there's two wicks, one wick demonstrating God's kindness and one wick demonstrating his severity. His severity is described in Isaiah 43. I am the Lord, your, the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down and they will not rise. He's describing the Babylonians who have been such a torment to his people Israel. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. These rebellious Babylonians, these violent pagans oppressing uh, God's people, God had had enough, and now he was acting in judgment. He was going to extinguish them like a wick. So behold, dear ones, behold the kindness and the severity of the Lord, especially under the image of the two wicks. Let us hold our faith carefully. Let's appropriate our faith every day. Live our faith, develop our faith and trust in God every day. And let us not become those who are hard-hearted and allow our faith to be so neglected that we engage in all sorts of grotesque injustice because then we will know the severity of God. May that be kept far from us. God bless you.